thus begins this endo meeting on January 24 of 2024. Yes. Um, the topic today is that we have a guest, Jessica Tallinn from Sprightly, and we are going to have a conversation about do uh, demons meeting goblins. That is to say, um, Agorics and our endo pet demon project meeting up with hopefully finding a place to meet up with Sprightly's goblins. Um, I'm going to start with a brief overview and a recap of uh, what the pet demon is, um, starting from the bottom up instead of from the top down. So um, the pet demon, uh, sharing my whole screen, the pet demon, whoop, whoop, there's a redaction. And there's, yeah, okay, redactions, <laughs> redactions, and finally getting over to the terminal, risky demo. Um, the, <laughs> we're doing great. <laughs> uh, so the pet demon is, uh, is a user agent for running confined programs on behalf of the user using pet names to manage permissions. Um, and the demon is... Hopefully, our intention is to build a network of such demons so that users can communicate directly with other users or other agents of other users and um, establish a CAPTP sort of message passing graph among all of these parties. Uh, this The design somewhat inverts the traditional model where pet names in this, uh, pet names are elevated to the top level of the demon. Um, and storage resembles Git. So there's a content address store internally, and then there's um, a sequence of pet stores where um, pet names correspond not to values in memory, but to formulas that allow those memories to be reconstructed. And the reason for this inversion of the design is that this allows us to, cre to cheaply create a permission management graph that can be reconstructed when a system restarts without having the, the obligation of doing a full replay or snapshotting that orthogonal persistence would require, but also providing a foundation so that some programs can be run within a container that does orthogonal persistence. That's that's the top level overview. How What does it look like? Um, this is a, uh, let's begin with Mark's counter example. <clears throat> a pun that will never get old. Oh wait, it's already old. <laughs> this is this is a caplet in JavaScript that constructs a remotable object that implements a method increment and captures in its closure state uh, the numbers uh, an, an incremented number. Um, the daemon has a protocol that the caplets are uh, a caplet is a JavaScript program that exports a make function which receives powers. And powers can be any pet named thing, but usually is uh, it's usually a, a an agent that mediates uh, it, it can be direct access to powers or an agent that mediates powers on behalf of the user. Um, in this case, we don't need any. So endo. Uh, nothing up my sleeve, purge force, um, endo make counter dot JS and name the resulting value counter. And then we have an alleged counter over CAPTP. N note that there are a number of processes in the mix. The daemon is one process that's running on behalf of me as the user. Um, and then it's creating a worker for the counter. So the counter will be isolated in a, in a sub process. And all of this is mediated over CAPTP. The CLI is talking to the daemon over CAPTP. The daemon is talking to the worker over CAPTP. The, 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 the counter exists in this worker. Um, and then we can do endo eval, evaluate a JavaScript program where we send, uh, we deliver in uh, cap in the O cap in parlance, uh, an increment me message to the counter. Um, and we endow this program with the value corresponding to the counter pet name. This is shorthand for counter, uh, counter in the program corresponding to the counter pet name. And voila, 
that works, that works, that works. And here's where it gets interesting. If we restart the daemon and eval again, the closure state is lost and the pet name graph is preserved. So in this case, we after the restart, when I evaled this program, it said, okay, in order to evaluate this program, I need the pet name of the thing called counter. So I'm going to reconstruct that from how I remember how to construct it, which is from up here. Um, and then uh, we proceed. Okay, so the next step after this is, what if we wanted to create a program that required powers? Um, we're going to give this program an agent that mediates on our behalf um, where they can request powers from the user. In this case, the host, I want a suitable, and this is a descriptive message. And this is a pet name for the agent so that it can preserve a relationship for a future execution. And this is a namespace allocated in the con, uh, allocated per this thing such that whenever this gets, whenever the daemon gets restarted, it can provide the same answer for the same question on a subsequent restart without having to harass the user for permission to things they've already given permission to. And this is a doubler, so it's just going to get a counter and double everything it gets from that. So endo make guest is going to create that agent on behalf of this guest program. I'm going to call it the doubler agent. And endo Eve, uh, and the first thing that you will note is that endo inbox will tell me, oh, uh, oh, right. I haven't done anything yet. Endo make doubler.js, name the result doubler, and give it the powers of the doubler agent. It's going to do that. And then endo eval eventual send doubler incur giving it the doubler is going to hang and the reason is because in my inbox you will see that i have i the user in my user interface which is currently the cli have received a request from the doubler agent hey this program that i'm running confined in this worker needs a power i can resolve that request in message zero with the object named counter and then it proceeds, and then it will proceed again. And if I restart, the counter and the doubler have disappeared, but I can run this again, resuming with a fresh closure for all of these different programs. And we're, uh, uh, all of these things have been rehydrated. The permissions that were previously granted are restored through the pet name graph. Um, then the next thing to do is to start over Endo purge force. This gets rid of all of my pet names, starts me over from nothing. I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to, well, I'll reveal that later. So endo install, name it cat from cat.js. This is going to, and I'm giving the powers of myself. This is creating, installing a uh, of a user, a Java, a, a, a web based user interface in my daemon using cat.js as the program and giving it the powers of self, Ugh, powers of self. And the result is that it's going to start hosting a website locally. Uh, the mechanism for this is going to change. There's nothing to see here. But the idea is that each of these installed applications gets an isolated origin that persists its state, for example, if it has um, if it has local storage, it's going to be on a preserved origin across restarts, etc. Um, and it's going to be run in here. Um, and so since I purged, I've created cat. It's in my inventory. Now I can do things like make guest doubler agent again. And that's going to show up in my inventory. Um, I can now split my screen, I can do endo make counter.js and name that counter. Uh, quick question. I have a quick question, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, so is cat the page? Or yeah. like if you hit remove there on. Yeah, it would it would make it so that that page couldn't be loaded again. 
yeah, deleting cat would get rid of the installation and the page would not load again. Um, and it'll show cat is going to show you that what it actually is, is an object containing the bundle that was stored into the content address store, which is readable, etc. Um, and then the powers object, which is all of the powers that were granted to it. This is a dangerous thing to pass around. Um, and then the URL for inf is informatively the, um, the, the, the URL where you can open it from. Um, and then endo open cat will open this thing. Well, just as a shorthand for opening this URL and the nearest web browser. Um, the, and, sorry, I just have another question. Uh, what, so self powers, uh, mm -hmm. uh, get more granular as to what those powers are in particular uh yeah self is is the agent representing yourself it is it is an agent that is implicitly allowed to do anything basically versus a guest which is an agent that everything it attempts to do has to be granted expressly by the user it has to reach through that powers object to get permission from the user yeah, by granting this particular application all the powers of me, I am creating a user interface for myself. This is a weird edge case. Um, the yeah. So, and if I make doubler.js, name that doubler, and give it the powers of the doubler agent, you'll note that the user interface on the web or is the same, except that now it's I've received a message and I can re, uh, resolve that with count. I made a misspelling, so I'm I'm giving it the count to your and uh, endo eval with doubler does the same thing. And that's that's my demo. Um, and now I hand off to Aaron for geeks bearing gifts. You are inaudible, but not muted. You're inaudible. For a moment there, we could hear an air compressor in the background. <laughs> but still inaudible? You are now audible. Oh, yay. Hi, I'm Aaron Kumavis. Um, I will be uh, demoing a demo um, based on on uh, based on me needing to share my screen first. I will be showing a demo based on this presentation by Sprightly at Foresight. Um, and yeah, let me show you what I got. Okay, so we don't actually have proper networking multiplayer already yet. So I'm kind of uh, setting up this multi user chat environment, simulating via multiple profiles. Um, on on the local endo daemon um, on the left we have the host and on the right we have alice um, and so uh, as in the sprightly demo we have a chat interface so here i'm talking to alice and say hi and alice can see the message over there um, let's see what else we have in the inventory uh, this is based on what chris Gual just demoed so it may look a little familiar we have the inventory uh, I added the chat and I added the like current logged in. Um, so Alice doesn't have anything in her inventory right now. Uh, and the host has some things. Um, okay, so uh, I'd like to play a game with Alice. Let's say, let's play a game. Um, and then uh, let's see, let's try uh, game one KCE. And I'm just making sure I didn't forget anything. Um, let's uh, so uh, let me let me open this game locally to uh, on the host to show what it's like. Uh, first, so here is a card game where we all share one deck that we managed to get. So I'm going to go ahead and create that deck, um, and I'll come back to this in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to I want to send that deck. Uh, we'll see. I started a deck, and then as just sort of a Demo wart for this one. I need to also send the guest deck. Um, uh, and then I want Alice to, uh, I'll, I'll come back to this. Second. Okay, so Alice has some messages over here and I in included in these message, some 
objects that I sent across. And one was this deck, this you know empty deck that we're going to build together. So when I click that, I get some context menu, and I can adopt the deck to my own inventory. So now I have the deck. Um, I'm going to accept the, the guest deck as well. There's the powers for the deck in this case. Um, and then for the game, the game is a little different because it is an app. It's a, a web bundle that uh, Chris also just demonstrated. Um, so here, when I do install app, what it's going to do is it's going to add the bundle to my inventory and then uh, mix in my powers. Ideally, we'd probably want guest powers, but right now it's just going to do the self powers for Alice. Okay, so now uh, Alice has the game installed. And we can both, we both have a deck. Um, but Alice doesn't have any cards to add to the deck right now. So let's send Alice uh, a card that she, so she can help build the, the deck out. So let's just say here's a card and let's give her card deja vu. Uh, okay, so we'll just add that to our inventory and that shows up in the application because the application is watching the inventory and filtering for cards. So now when Alice hits add card to deck, this is the deja vu card is added um, and now the host can add some more cards and we'll just kind of fill out the deck. Um, okay, so now the host is going to start the game and now the, and we can send the game to Um, to Alice, Alice, uh, once Alice uh, accepts these objects, um, she can join the game. So now they're playing a game together. Um, and yeah, so then they can take turns. The, it, what's happening here is uh, at the bottom of the screen, it's showing the cards of the current player. Normally you wouldn't be doing this in a proper multiplayer environment. Um, but, um, okay, so it's Alice's turn, so she's going to play that one, Bob's going to play that one, and you kind of go back and forth and play the card game. Now, this game is um, designed, uh, one, it has that shared deck, so everyone can bring in the cards, and that kind of helps, like, balance the game, um, because you're not guaranteed to get the card yourself. Your opponent might get the card, um, and the cards themselves are individual objects that have code in them that say how they're, uh, what happens when they're played. And uh, yes, so this is, uh, this is what we're playing with so far. Let me know if I can answer any questions. Yeah, and with that, we turn the, turn the table over to Yesika. Can I, can I ask a few questions first? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so I'll start with a, a more specific question and then I will move to the more uh, general questions. Uh, and my most specific question is uh, actually about the card. Um, when you sent the card from one player to the other player, was that a transfer or was that a copy? Um, yeah, so uh, here we don't actually have a network boundary in what I'm demoing today. Um, uh, I, I'm not familiar with your terminology, but I think in this case it would be a transfer and that I'm only sending a remote reference. I'm not sending a copy of it. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, use is probably better to do a copy so you don't have to worry about um, everyone being online. Um, but at present it's modeled as a local transfer. Okay, that's it. That's cool. Uh, by the way, I can I just say I'm I'm really impressed with the with the both demos. Um, specifically the the chat one with the um with the card game. I thought was was really cool. Um, I really love that. Um, yeah, I look forward to I, I, being able to take it for a spin. Um, and I think it would be a lot of fun to like make your own cards and share them with your friends and pass them all around. Yeah, I think so too. I think that'd be cool. Um. So I, I have a question about net layers on, on either of the, any of the demos uh, shown in terms of like how, I guess thinking about this in terms of an, a demo that uh, we could also um, a goal for interoperation. We, we obviously need to speak over the network. So I, 
I guess I'm wondering what kind of net layers or networking um, are supported in uh, Agoric stuff. So uh, there are none yet. Uh, I have in my working copy a TCP, uh, just as a as, as a level one, <laughs> just uh, TCP addresses, and the design of that is in progress, and and I'm riffing on it until I, I'm hoping to get. It. I have a pretty good idea of what it's going to be. It looks kind of like um, the net layers are just other caplets that you install, uh, much in the way mm -hmm. that I showed with endo make. There is a mode for endo make that allows you to just uh, a, a dash dash unsafe that just creates a caplet in the node uh, in, in the node environment so it isn't confined. And that's a great way to bootstrap uh, a capability environment, just creating a caplet that a, an unconfined caplet that creates a hardened API um, out of the unhardened material just laying around in Node. Um, we try to make that as small as possible. My son is delivering food. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Orion. <laughs> the um, the uh, the uh, the 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 way the the way it works is that there will be a, a namespace a, a directory within the inventory that is special where you can put net layers um and then when you send an mm -hmm. invitation to another uh to another participant out of band that'll come in the form of well cbd either a url or or some other material that includes the nonce and the corresponding addresses we do not do cryptography yet um that's that's on okay. that's something we might do we might not it might be sufficient for it might be sufficient for the con connections to be confidential for our purposes we don't know yet um the uh it, it provided that the nonces are unforgeable um and we're also not completely settled on whether we're going to use nonces over as opposed to using like signed cap uh, uh signed c lists we d we don't know yet I'm running. I'm running for nonces since it's the easiest thing to get working, um, and then we'll evolve from there. the 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 idea is to be on a trajectory for having whatever it is that connects to OCAP and, um, and as for, that's just net layers. Um, we are all we have already we have done some exploration into how to get onto the Tor network, which I think we could succeed at if we followed it through to con to conclusion. And that would be based off of our basic TCP. We would then just omit TCP from the networks that are in your invitation and instead present the Tor that forwards to the TCP address that you're running. Um, mm -hmm. And then on top of that, uh, th then if on top of that, it's like which ca which cap TP you're running on the wire, which message framing, which et cetera, et cetera. All of that is right. potentially parameterizable um, in the protocol in the protocol name. Uh, which is why I, I, in my prototype, I'm being unduly specific that this is TCP dash net string for the message boundary dash cap TP zero with JSON and <laughs> uh, all of which are things that we might fiddle with um, before this is final. And to be clear, this is all in a branch. We have not published anything yet. We have not. We have neither published nor landed to master any of the demos that you've seen. Cool. Um, sorry, I'm just taking notes so I don't forget things. Um, um, I I did have another question about the the pet names Damon and how that would that add any extra layers for if you're thinking about like. It, something in goblins speaking to say the counter and sending a message to the counter to increment it and get the, the value back um would the fact that it's running in the pet names daemon require anything special or or is it simply just going to be an object on the on the or over cap tp that you message and get an answer uh, there are two two kinds of answers to that question. One of which, the first one, is that it would just be an object that you send messages to. Um, any anything that anything that is exposed by the daemon is just an object that you send messages to. 
um, the uh, but with the caveat that in this architecture currently the daemon um, the there are you there are multiple internal CAPTP connections that the message is forwarded through to arrive in the eventual worker where it responds and that rolls all back. Um, we do not internally do through party handoff. This is actually for us a sandbox where we would first, or this is the sandbox where we will first have an opportunity to even think about three party handoff. Um, we haven't implemented it. And uh, mm -hmm. this gives us a place to iterate on three party handoff. You might run into some of the rough edges around symbols versus strings and stuff like that. That's that's uh, methods being represented as strings. You mean? Right. Uh, oh yes, yeah. I mean, th this, is, this is if we manage to connect a minimum viable OCAP and bridge, we will quickly discover all of the rough edges. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. You can you can also message uh, lambdas, right? Like uh, uh, without without methods. Yes, we can. Yeah. What we can't do is send a message to an object that presents as both an object with methods and a Lambda. We do not yet support that. Uh, okay. callable, callable and invocable messages on the same, with the same value or not supported. Okay. Uh, I think that I think those were my questions. Um, I I can share some demos. I I didn't uh, quite know what the scope of this meeting was, so I don't have too much prepared, and and we don't have too many uh, uh, demos like that. But I can I can show you, uh, for example, Goblin Chip, which I think is I think would actually be interested interesting, um, especially in relation to the sort of chat uh that uh was was demoed earlier um it doesn't have the it's not actually as fully fledged as that uh as your implementation uh, in terms of like having applications and being able to install those and share those amongst the chat that is something we do want to have um and uh, we'll, we'll be working towards but yet uh, we we currently do not have that so uh let me how do you screen share here? I am not familiar with Zoom. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, ah, it's the big the big green button. That makes sense. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so um, uh, actually, I guess I can do it from here. So uh, I, I will show it. Um, I can. Show this. Um, it actually supports two different net layers in Goblins. We have, uh, which I'll explain while this is loading. Um, in Goblins, we we support sort of two or three net layers, depending how you look at it. Um, the um, we we obviously support uh, the tall onion net layer, um, as uh, documented in the net layers doc. Um, we support uh, a TCP net layer um, that is using TLS over the top uh, and self-signed certificates. Um, and then we have something that we've just developed called the pre-lay pre net layer that is basically um, uh, a relay server that can use any net layer, any of the two, mostly designed for the TCP one. Um, that uh, allows you to uh, connect through a relay server. So if two uh, machines are not reachable, as is often the case with CCP, um, they still might be able to connect. Um, uh, so um, I will show this over the... Um, uh, I'll call the chat room goblins. Um, and I will let it start, and then I will start a, uh, a another um, uh, sorry 
things are a bit slow over um, tall onion net layers, as you may imagine. So uh, I've started, uh, I've created a chat room uh, called Goblins, and uh, I am currently the only user in here. Um, and when you start it, you get the sturdy ref, um, which is uh, to the chat room specifically. And then uh, you can you can join this. Uh, come in chat. Did I misspell that? I am in the wrong directory. That won't help me one bit. Paragraphs. <laughs> uh, uh, Seconds. Um, I should really have set this up beforehand. <laughs> um, this is a fairly it uh, stripped down chat uh, protocol, so I think it would actually be fairly easy for us to start um, trying to develop something to end. Uh, operate over this. Um, so, um, goblin chat, onion, and then this time I'm always the client. And I think if I just have like Alice, and then I think that's the way around <laughs> this argument should go. Um, hopefully, we'll get a window and Alice joining. Um, and I could, I could start. Another, uh, maybe I will, I, it, it's not that exciting uh, to the user, but I could start another. And uh, if if another person were to join, uh, then uh, because there would be multiple, pe uh, three or more people, uh, third party handoffs would also um, come into play, uh, which is exciting stuff um, as references are just freely given around. Um, so you can see I'm joining this and I, and I will group myself. Um, so that's that's Goblin Chat, a bit slow over um, tall, but it's pretty fast over TCP TLS. So I think this actually could be a pretty good base if I if I uh, pull up the code. Um, there's a bunch that is uh, the GUI, uh, and then there's a bunch that is like uh, something for doing GTK. Uh, but the actual back end of it is fairly small. You can see it's 218 lines, and that includes some comments and some uh, white space and stuff. Um, so this is a fairly lean port of a chat protocol um, that has uh, a lot of these things have methods on them, um, and there are many different objects. Um, and so I think this would be fairly easy to implement. Um, I can, uh, let's see, uh, I can also show, um, let's see if it works. I haven't dusted this off since I mentioned it in. The... While you've got this on the screen, if I may. Yep. We just saw a chat demo on each end. Um, do any of the verbs here correspond between the, the um, endo demon? Uh, which verbs? Demo? Well, you, you tell me one of the verbs. I, I'm struggling to read this a little I bit. I can tell you what the endo verbs are. The, the pet demon's verbs are send, which can send a message, and the message can have interpolated edge names with their corresponding capabilities. Who receives the send message? Um, this uh, sender. Um, send is invoked by the sender, and uh, received the, uh, by the sender or received by the recipient. It's received by the recipient, sent by the sender. Send, oh, okay. <laughs> and as <laughs> to be clear, <laughs> um, okay. And I and the and the the then the recipient's verb is receive as well, um, though it might be just as well deliver or whatever. Um, the but that's internal to the protocol. 
the sender uses the send method, obtains the mailbox for the recipient, and then calls receive on the recipient mailbox. This oh, is okay. this is not important because that's all totally in flux too. There's right. Well, that's why that's part of my point. Now, does yeah. any of those have corresponding things on the screen on the code we're looking at? I think that that's the only verb that it, that corresponds. Uh, so, so... Go ahead, Jessica. Yeah. So um, this this will uh, you get an authentic authenticated channel. So uh, you have a a, a user controller and there is also a user object that is is public somewhere here uh, which has some methods on it so for example uh, you get uh, self-proposed names um, and there is actually a more complicated version of this implemented that has pet names for people you can name people uh, which is cool uh, but this version is much more stripped down um, but yeah, so you've got a user object uh, shared around and you get uh, when people um, join and things. And from that, uh, you can get self proposed name. It uh, has some sealers and unsealers to, to just do some checking to make sure that that user actually um, sent that message. Um, and uh, you also um, send messages uh, using uh, send message. So, um, so you can send to the authenticated channel. Um, it, it's using a sort of client server. So for example, uh, it's, it's not so clear because uh, it's both running on my machine, but this particular instance uh, is being the server and then everyone, like it's not a true peer-to-peer um system in in uh, the sense of if the server were to shut down the, the chat room would close um and then it sends uh, a message to the server which then um propagates that across the network um so mm, that's right. the the general gist of how this works yeah and the thing um, that the pet demon lacks is the notion of a room where multiple participants are are, are sharing it. all of the messages are user to, or, or, or agent to agent um right. it's really the the what what we've done in right. Aaron's demo is bootstrap chat on top of the permission management user uh, uh, protocol which yeah. allows which allows mm -hmm. capabilities to be sent and and requested across across a mail from mailbox to mailbox and it's our intention to stretch that over the network and then maybe on top of that bootstrap the notion of shared rooms we could also alternately, instead of having shared rooms, just require um, messages to be broadcast from peer to all of the recipients that you want to see the message, maybe with the context of who else saw the message, but that's not decided yet. It would also be right. possible to have a... So I, I think this... Yeah, uh, I, was, I was gonna say, I think... I think this sort of thing uh, with what the actual protocol of, of these objects, like what methods they have and, and such, I think it is less relevant for this particular discussion. Um, but I think having some sort of chat room uh, interrupt would be, would be really cool. Um, I don't necessarily, I, like, I think the very first thing uh, we should maybe aim to do is, is simply to take something like like that simple counter program, or uh, if I pull up, um, uh, I think it's in, it's not in this, it's in, pull up the um, OCAP and test suite thing, you, uh, the, the OCAP and test suite implementation, uh, obviously you could do something like a very simple greeter, which, which just takes a name uh, and then will, uh, send send a message to that. Um, yeah, and for bootstrapping, so basically, yeah, so, for bootstrapping, right. OCAP and um, what well, uh, like like the greeter would be really uh, it would be really important to start with an echo method so that we can start testing round tripping assertions. Um, yes. Yeah. No. That's that sounds actually ideal. Uh, so, uh, yeah. There is an echo. Uh, this 
right? Uh, this has a trigger GC thing, but it's it's not relevant to this. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, just mm -hmm. it takes mm -hmm. some and it and it provides those back. It doesn't do anything fancy with those. Yep. Um, I think that agree that would be great. Um, and and so I think that would actually be, you know, um, before we built the chat, a, a really interesting demo and and hopefully much easier to get to. And once we've done that, I think getting to the chat will be yeah, um, yeah, I, straightforward. I, yeah, I agree that this is a first step for sure. Um, I think chat might actually be a mm -hmm. third, fourth step. <laughs> but I, I'm also interested. In <laughs> I'm also like after if we once we establish that there is some cross section of OCAPN that works between our systems, albeit with bridges, um, I think the next interesting step would to be see if we could have a weblet, which is to say a caplet inside of a web page, embed uh, a WebAssembly guile mm -hmm. um, application in the page, and uh, and mm -hmm. there, and thereby use the web page JavaScript to bridge it to the daemon and essentially add uh it would essentially add goblins as a kind of caplet that could be run inside of the daemon and inside of the daemon or, or, or oh can, yeah, it's a cheap net layer yeah exactly <laughs> use the daemon as a <laughs> layer or the browser as a net layer yeah yeah interesting um yeah but... i don't know how long we're, we are from having i, I think quite a while still um i, I don't want to put a, any amount of time on that uh, since i'm not directly working on it but uh, i think we're still quite a while from from goblins working in the browser still but we, we are making good progress towards that um oh okay i must have been confused. i can also um uh, we, we've got a lot of scheme uh, our gotcha. RNRS, uh, so, sorry, our seven RS um, uh, scheme working. Um, we've more or less got all of it, apart from modules working currently, uh, which is really cool. Um, but we uh, do not have, for example, fibers currently working, uh, which is uh, sort of our VAT model and and how that all works internally. Um, and we don't have um, a bunch of guile specific stuff. Uh, a lot of that will be built on top of our uh, R7 RS scheme. So um, not too far away, hopefully, but uh, it's not there today. So I can demonstrate wow. that. I'm sure that, um, yeah, it's, it's an aside. I'm curious whether fibers in mm -hmm. means that you are or not running on a run to completion event loop. My understanding of fibers uh, is that there can be preemption at the call boundary. Oh. Uh, oh, we do not have so to answer I, that. I, I was going to show. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I was going to just finish up the, the demo. Um, I was going to mention that we, we have uh, a goblins um, I landed some abstract stuff. Started and uh, detach some of that stuff, and you'll you'll notice from from the Okapan group we we've uh, got the second bottom <laughs> um, now into main, uh, and we've separated tags so it's not too syrup like. And now, what isn't in goblins, but I do have here is a very basic uh, small caps um, implementation. Uh, so I can oops, uh, go and come here, and I can start encoding stuff, uh, you know, um, and it will look like uh, small caps. Uh, obviously, some of that's escaped, um, but you can even get like, um, you know, foo, and you will see the familiar um, Percent sign foo and uh, what? What's it called? It's called like a 
Is this, do I have to do news modules, compliments, control, abstract? I think that's what I called it. Is that not what I called it? Um, abstract types. Um, still not what I called it, apparently. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I did call that. Um, oh, it's just goblins abstract types. Interesting. Um, <laughs> I must have moved that. Uh, um, so I can do small caps encode. Um, did I? Yeah, I did. I called it just silage. Um, and what if there are capabilities in there? Five. Uh, like a like a. Object reference? Like yeah. either a promise or an object, yeah. Um, so is that not in here? Maybe. Because yeah, the small caps usually comes out with two pieces, the body and the slots. Yeah. Uh, did I put it in here? Uh, so I, I don't know whether I'm getting that from. I guess you can do more uh, values in Import. Object. Um, oops. So you can see that. Okay. It's, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, doing it at five. So that would be an object at um, position five there. Mm -hmm. And do I have prompts? Um, yeah. So you can see correctly. Uh, you can also code I call it make tag I'm still getting used to the new syntax um, so I'll call five. I don't know what I called it <laughs> um, mm. okay. I'm, I'm not I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here but um, <laughs> I, I, I can see where you're headed anyway yeah um, Okay, I'm going to give up with that, but uh, <laughs> you, you get the point. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that, those are my demos. Uh, so that answers the question about whether uh, we're converging on um, the monadic tagged, uh, single single value tagged, and yeah, and then we get to have a conversation some at some point in an OCAP in context, I imagine about. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, like multi-value return or multi-value promise resolution and all that. Um, yes. Yeah, I think we proposed something. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember the status of that. Um, but uh, certainly I could, uh, since the small caps thing was mostly a demo to see how it would look uh, and to encode some messages, um, I'm not 100% sure of its correctness. Um, but uh, we certainly could use it for the time being um, if you don't have a syrup um, implementation as something over the wire if needed. Um, it's not in mass, uh, the, the main branch, but uh, I think that's fine. We can just uh, work with it on a, on a secondary branch. Um, but, but I would be interested, uh, like I said, on, on starting with something like a, an echo uh, actor and, and seeing where we can get right. to that. I'm suspecting the very first thing we'll we'll notice is the net layer stuff. Um, I don't know if it makes sense to try and communicate first with either the tools work you mentioned earlier that you've been doing or something like the TCP stuff. Um, it, de it definitely makes the most sense to to either build up from. Uh, even a shared pipe would probably be sufficient place to start. We don't we don't actually need to use the network to get CAPTP proven. Um, it could it could just be a shared pipe between two processes, and that would be fine. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think it. Net layers are, are fairly easy to write in Goblin, so we could also write write something incredibly uh, simple just to throw messages. Um, yeah, yeah. We are we are very with the with the pet demon. We 
uh, aren't necessarily very flexible about message enveloping in particular. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's, that will be a thing that needs to infect OCAPN is um, because we want to be able to bridge. Well, we, so, so the demon is communicating with its workers over just standard, um, just, just pipes. Uh, and inside of the pipes, it's using net, net string protocol for message mm -hmm. boundaries and then CAPTP messages within that, which is JSON. Um, uh, sometimes nested JSON, sometimes small cap, sometimes compact ordered. We, 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 oh, we haven't gotten to <laughs> compact ordered, but these are all things that are in flux even for us. But the the daemon connects to the CLI through uh, a named uh, a Unix domain socket or a named pipe on Windows. Um, and again, that string protocol for the message boundary. But then the weblets are communicating over HTTP with a web socket and WebSocket provides its own message boundaries. So that layer is omitted. Um, mm -hmm. And then of course, we have prototyped work communicating through host messaging to from Chrome extensions to the daemon. Um, and that's its own message protocol. <laughs> it's this 32-bit uh, right. like uh, little endian length prefix messages that the browsers chose for some reason. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there are, it, it is likely that we will need to have all of the layers of the net internal to the net layer, um, be composable and pluggable. Mm -hmm. uh, since, since there's only, uh, I'm guessing five minutes left of this meeting. Um, I, I, I have the question of, uh, I'd, I'd love to keep the uh, momentum on this um, and so I my question is what should our next steps be in terms of getting some stuff working well from Agorix and uh, I am slated to work on pet demon stuff in the context mm -hmm. of our grant from MetaMask about one day a week um, which okay. is not <laughs> um <laughs> And, and with that time, I'm trying to get uh, as quickly as possible to having a demonstration of end-to-end -end TCP connected demons, um, which okay. was end of last year. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and and to the exclusion of all else, um, MetaMask has Aaron and Eric, I believe, dabbling in pet demon. Um, they've started to make contributions and um, their their agenda is their own. Um, the uh, my hope is to well, I, I do not know when I look at Ocapen next. That's that's okay. all. Uh, uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote seventy five percent of a syrup encoder decoder in javascript and it is not published mm -hmm. and it is not complete and it is not in a form we can use um but uh, uh, it, it, i i felt that um to show good faith we needed to extend bridges in both directions um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah there's uh, yeah and it's not clear how we would use syrup to interface with our protocol yet. The, and there are also a number of internal conversations about how we get to binary. Um, syrup is an option, but it isn't our favorite option. Um, it's, it's more likely that we will start hobbling along by using base64 encoded, um, embedding base64 encoded binary inside of uh, small caps and then work our way out from there. Um, Right. The yeah, that's that's where we are. Okay. Um well I I um I guess that on the sprightly side, like I am I'm doing some work on OCAPN, but my main focus and I'm basically sneaking it in alongside other uh things that I'm focusing on. I'm currently focusing on uh persistence 
things. So serializing the entire graph um, to disk and being able to rehydrate all of that and upgrade object behavior through the same system and things like that. So lots of fun things, but not um, directly on OCAPN. Although interestingly that um, the impetus to land the abstract syntax stuff came from the serialization work. Um, so that's why I've landed when I did. Um, I I do I do still sneak plenty of time in for uh, I say sneak it's it's not uh, it's it's no secret but I uh, you know like I I am getting uh, some uh, OCAPN work in and I would love to try and progress this in some fashion um, further. Um, uh, for, for example, I, I could try and, and, and get some uh, a net layer we could speak over or something, but it sounds like we should have some kind of consensus on that first. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would be, um, be exciting to make progress on this. Yeah. It's been it's been a fun meeting, and I've loved to see your 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 demos though. Um, very exciting. Yeah, I um, yeah on Ocapen, I I suggested to uh, David Thompson. David's his first name, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> the uh, it might make sense <clears throat> when embedding. When we when we get to the point where Guile WebAssembly applications can be embedded in a web page, where goblins inside of Guile scheme inside of a <laughs> WebAssembly inside of a web page um, is reaching out, I think OCAPN could be a really great answer to the FFI bridge, um, since mm. since we have to talk, since we have to talk at the same abstract. Um, at, at, since they have to speak at the same abstract boundary and have the same constraints as we have talking between agoric and goblins in the general case, um, mm -hmm. the data model problems are the same problems. It would be interesting to have a JavaScript um, uh, uh, to terminate Java to terminate OCAP and, and JavaScript speaking to a con uh, a contained WASM application. Um, that. Yeah, I think that could solve a lot of problems on both ends. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, any case, all right. I uh, we're at we're at a minute over time. Um, does anybody else on the call have questions or comments or wishes, dreams, desires? All right, let's call that a meeting. Um, and. Let's uh, all make it official by pressing stop. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks, right. everyone. Thanks, everyone.